Welcome to Business Reporter's Future of Insurance Campaign. I'm Keith Kosinski. How do employee benefits brokers find and quote the right plans for their clients? How do employers evaluate their options for health insurance and other benefits? What are HR and compliance departments looking for when choosing a health cover? You will be forgiven if you think that they just need to browse the web, do a quick comparison, and find a solution. After all, almost every other industry has gone through significant transformation that allows for consumer-friendly experiences. There are thousands of new tech companies creating digital products and services built specifically to meet the needs of today's modern insurance users. But they can't deliver on this promise without the right data from insurance carriers, who often still rely on old legacy systems. So how do these various entities connect and exchange data within a complex ecosystem that includes thousands of different insurance carriers, benefits brokers, benefits administrators, and more? We have invited Michael Levin from Veracred to find out. Mike, it's a beautiful day here in New York City. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Good morning, Keith. Thanks for having me today. Now, of course, of course. Let's start our conversation talking about disruptive trends. Okay. What have been some of the most disruptive trends in health insurance and employee benefits over the past few years? Well, it's an exciting time in this, in this industry. There's a, a lot of investment, a lot of new technology that is coming to bear, and it's all born out of increasing consumer expectations. Along comes the Affordable Care Act and healthcare.gov, and all of a sudden, individuals can see all the different plans, tens or hundreds of plans that they can avail themselves. It also created a modern shopping experience, like you might see with, with Amazon. So that created a sea of change and a whole new set of technologies and companies that, fl uh, that flowed from that. Tech first brokers that offering alternatives to uh, healthcare.gov, uh, employer based exchanges where employers are offering uh, more choice, even new products that regulators have approved that allow employers to, uh, to allow their employees to go to the individual market uh, and, and buy products and have more choice. So choice was a, a one big uh, trend over the last five years. The second is around transparency. And you know, it starts with health insurance and employee benefits are to protect your, your financial and your well-being and your health. Uh, and yet they're increasingly difficult to understand. You have all these strange words, copays and deductibles and maximum out-of-pockets. So there are companies that are helping uh, uh, individuals uh, understand their insurance, help them understand whether their doctors are covered or to find a new doctor, help them understand uh, whether their, uh, their drugs are covered by a particular plan. So all these new technology bring transparency uh, to this market that was once very, you know, very opaque, if you will. The last trend is that we want to interact with these products. We want to buy them and interact with them where and when uh, and through the means that we want. So I like to get my music through Apple Music. You may use Spotify, but each of us wants our own experience, the one that's best suited for our, our needs. So there's new technologies coming to bear that are allowing us as individuals and as employees and indeed employers to buy and interact with our coverages when we want to and where we want to. This is creating, and you take this all together, a highly distributed environment. You had mentioned a distributed environment. Tell us about how this new environment changes the business for insurance carriers, brokers, and Ben admins. So brokers, for brokers, uh, expectations have taken a market step up. Their, their clients, whether they be individual or, or group and clients, employer and clients, uh, want to see the breadth of choices, not only across uh, carriers, but even across different lines of coverage. Think medical and dental and life and what have you. And they don't want to be subjected to paper. They don't want to be filling out paper forms. Who does that anymore? Benefit administration or Ben Admins are software that employers use to help them manage uh, these benefits. And what's important is this increasing breadth of benefits. So again, not just medical and dental and life and disability, but there's wellness and telemedicine and identity theft and pet insurance. 
there's this long tail of benefits that need to be managed. So as a benefit administration platform, you need, now need to be able to communicate and exchange data with a whole host, a much broader array of, of partners, and that's exceedingly complex. And the carriers now, they have to figure out how to exchange data with parties that they've never had to, to do so uh, with before. And their systems typically haven't been built uh, to exchange data with these external parties. So they're trying to figure out how to do so. And when you look at all this, there's this gap, this technology gap that exists uh, that needs to be addressed. Yeah, tell us more about the gap between new contexts and legacy solutions. So I, I talked a little bit about all these tech companies building better solutions for you and I as individuals, for us as employers, uh, for the brokers. These may be transparency applications or tech-enabled brokers or, uh, or quoting platforms and enrollment platforms. So these are companies that are started up to solve those problems. Uh, they're, they're, they are tech companies and they, they formed assuming that the data and the connectivity that they would need to enable their solution would, would be there. They also assumed that it would be there through things called APIs. An API is simply a way for two systems to, to talk with one another. But the reality is our industry has very, very few APIs and those that do exist are not fully featured and they're not fully developed. They don't handle all the functionalities. What's left over is this garage band of different file formats and means and forms of connectivity that is very, very complex. So for these tech companies to solve their problem, to build that, uh, that experience uh, for, for whomever they're building it, they found that they have to now build the underlying data uh, and connectivity. Now carriers, they have another problem. They're being asked for these, these things called APIs. And building technology, or when a carrier builds technology, it's never overnight. These are seven-figure investments. They take years uh, to, uh, to build. It often uncovers kind of deeper systems issues. A lot of these carriers have very old systems, sometimes combination of systems from acquisitions. Sometimes they're based on really old languages like COBOL. And when they're trying to build APIs, they realize that their core systems may need to be uh, replaced. So now we're talking an even bigger investment in even more time. Uh, so they're trying to figure out how do, they, how do they bridge this gap. Well, we talk about infrastructure as a means to, to bridge this gap. And you're discussing building. We know that Veracred has created a robust infrastructure to help bridge that gap. Yep. Now, how does this help with innovation in the space. No. So first, what's infrastructure? Well, you can think of it as the pipes and the wiring or the connective tissue for the industry. And, and the value in infrastructure is rooted for all parties in its one-to-many. So for a tech company, they build once and get access to all the carriers and all the providers on uh, uh, as, that are part of that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And a carrier as well, through one, uh, through one effort, can get access to all of the, the technology uh, companies that they are seeking to, uh, to enable. And there's a, a, a bigger opportunity here with infrastructure because there are, are problems that no one entity, no one Ben Admin, no one carrier is gonna solve for because they'll just never get the leverage out of it. They can't get the return on investment. Things like business rules and validations. Well, infrastructure can afford to build that kind of refinement uh, into this connective uh, web uh, because they can get the return across multiple users. Mike, one simple last question. What will the health and benefit space look like in five years? Well, let's start with where we are today. And people are liking signing up and working with their health insurance to sitting in the middle seat of an airplane. Uh, five years out, we should be and will be seeing enjoyable experiences. Uh, so how you, where you buy and how you interact with the insurance, whether you're an individual, an employer, a broker, will just be delightful experiences. We're going to see differences in how we interact with our insurance. Like, for example, Alexa, please change my address with, uh, with medical carrier A and dental carrier B. We're going to see new products that arise from this digital infrastructure that just weren't possible in kind of the old uh, analog environment in which 
we have lived and, and to a great extent currently uh, live. I suspect that we're going to see new distribution. Uh, in the UK, for example, you can buy your auto insurance at the gas station. You know, might we see the ability to buy your health insurance at the drugstore or sign up for your employer-sponsored gym membership at the gym uh, where it's naturally, uh, where it's natural. So all of these changes, making health insurance accessible, uh, making it understandable, uh, having better ways to interact, arise from this digital infrastructure. Mike, thank you so much for providing us with some extra insight into the future of insurance and benefits. We really appreciate your time. I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to tell our story.